Okay, good evening everybody and welcome and welcome to this media conference to preview tomorrow's UEFA Euro 20 round of 16 fixture with Germany. I'm joined here by Gareth Southgate and Harry Kane. Before we start taking your questions, just a few housekeeping notices. Uh, ideally, if you can wear headphones as when you ask your question to improve overall audio quality. And when you do step forward to ask a question, please state who your question is for clearly. So whenever we're ready, we'll start with raised hands. And we'll get underway shortly with Simon Peach from the Press Association. Hi, Gareth. Um, question for Gareth. Um, I'm sure you're sick to the back teeth of questions about Mason Mount and Ben Chilwell, but um, what is their situation and will they be involved in the squad and have they travelled down? How does that all work? Uh, well, they're having to travel separately to the team. So um, uh, they've had, as you know, um, individual training programs this week um, the only sessions they've been able to join in with us are when there's not full full team training so um, that's the that's the basis on which we've got to make the decision um, and then as for midnight tonight they can be freely back with the group we saw you say about writing your own players writing their own stories you said the same out of Colombia, just how important is that message to the group and, and this chance to make history? I think you said just seems to be only the second European Championship knockout win. Yeah, I mean it's a, an incredible record that really, but um, I, I think it's something we've talked about a lot as a team for the last four years. Um, this team has that opportunity. Um, I think in the you know previous eras we've always talked about the past and. Um, teams and their records and baggage and everything else and there's no reason for these uh, boys to feel that way um, most weren't born when a lot of those games happened um, it's a, it's an irrelevance for them so I think uh, we're all looking forward to the game tomorrow we know it's a fantastic game to be involved in um, and a real opportunity for us to to progress to a quarter final um, a b big opponent with with uh, excellent pedigree and great experience, but a game we're really looking forward to. Uh, a question for Harry: You're obviously the last memory is the 2018 World Cup, but you were in France for the last European Championship, last 16 match. I didn't go so well. Um, pretty confident you can put that right this time. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, like the gaffer said there, I think. Um, there's only a few of us that have maybe been involved in that tournament, in, in that game especially. And sometimes games like that give you more motivation to, to go and um, be successful in the future. And, and you can learn from uh, experiences like that. And, and uh, I did for sure, and uh, the players that were involved did for sure. So, um, yeah, it's a totally different circumstance. Um, we obviously plan a, a massive team in, in Germany. Um, but... Look, it's just one to look forward to. Uh, we feel confident. We've, we've had a good uh, start to the tournament. Uh, areas we can improve for sure. So hopefully we can take that into tomorrow night. There's, a, there's obviously been a lot of focus on you, Harry, and, you, and the lack of goals so far. Um, do, you, do you listen to any of that outside noise? How do you cope? And do you feel like the goals are going to start flying throughout the squad? Yeah, I mean, I've always said as a as a striker, you go through spells, good spells, and sometimes spells that. Uh, just don't quite go your way. The most important thing for me is that we're winning games. The first objective was to qualify, which we've done. The second is to now try and reach a quarter-final. So uh, whether I'm scoring, uh, the most important thing is that we're winning. So that's what I'm focused on tomorrow night. That's all the team are focused on. However however we get it done, um, that's our main objective. And um, yeah, we'll do everything in our power to, do, uh, to get through. It appears on the only hand raised, so I'll keep going. Uh, Gareth, um, a question for you. I, I, I didn't want to be the one that asked it, but I, someone's going to have to mention Euro 96 eventually. Um, this is going to be the biggest match on UK soil since then, I imagine. Um, do you speak to your players about how big this moment's going to be? I know you've spoken about writing your own history, but it is a huge moment. Yeah, we don't have to mention it, Simon, but you, you've chosen to, so we'll go there. Um, <laughs> No, I think you can make these things as big in your head as you want, really. Um, it's a game of football. These boys have played hundreds of them. Um, th there is, of course, great excitement uh, uh, with uh, with fans and people tuning into the game. Um, but we've got to trust in the way we prepare, transferring what we do in training into the game. 
um, and and focus on the things we can control. Everything else outside it brings excitement, brings motivation. Um, but uh, it's a game of football and an opportunity to get to a quarter final, and um, that's what we're focused on. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you, Thank you Simon. Uh, next, we'll go to James Ollie of ESPN. For Gareth, um, is it is it realistic to think that Mason or Ben can start, given presumably they haven't been able to do any any major team shape work with uh, as an eleven anyway? Well, clearly it's it's really complicated because um, there's the physical periodization that you would want for a game like this, and then there's the um, the tactical training um, they've had to. Uh, the meetings we've had, they've had to be in a separate room and, and dial in on Zoom. And so uh, the whole experience for them, uh, including travelling down tonight, is is uh, very, very difficult. But, um, you know, they're, they're uh, young players who I, I think can get on with things pretty well. Um, as I said, it's a decision I've got to take um, when when we're, we're looking at how they've been able to train and everything else. So... There's, there's a lot wrapped up in that call. Sorry, James, you're on mute you now. Week. Sorry, James, you start that one again. You're on mute. Thank you. Sorry, I was just saying, um, how useful has this week been, Gareth, to have a full week training with the team? Have you, do you feel like you've been able to make the most of it, despite the, the, issue, the issue with, obviously, Mount and Chilwell? Yeah, I think that um, it was important for a couple of days for the players to just relax and... Um, have a, have a have a lower physical output um, it, it would have been a very long lead in otherwise and um, now we've been able to get a lot of work done in on the training ground um, some tactical work which is important for this game in particular so um, yeah that's that's an unusual uh, opportunity for us um, it's probably the, the longest period we've had in 12 months to, to work with the team thanks Thanks, James. Uh, next, we'll go to Theo Squires from the Liverpool Echo. Hi, I've got a, a question for both of you. I'll start with uh, Gareth. Um, reports today saying that Jordan Pickford could be one of your penalty takers. Obviously, your last two major tournaments, he's been a big part in penalty shootout victories. It's a game against Germany. Penalties are always going to come up. Um, when you've already entered this jinx, how important is Jordan going to be um, against the Germans if it does go to penalties? Well, there's obviously a lot of football before that moment, and um, we, first and foremost, we've got to get the the 90 minutes right. So, um, but in that eventuality, the first thing is he's he's a very very good um, at stopping penalties, and that's uh, psychologically for us a very important uh, position. Um, and most goalkeepers are good strikers of a ball, really. So he, he's he's done it before. Um, obviously, everybody has been practicing that's part of the process we go through but um yeah as i say his uh his ability to save penalties is uh, is a great thing for us and now for harry obviously um you're arguably one of the best penalty takers in england in the premier league and jordan's got this ability to stop penalties um, i'm imagining you've been practicing lots in training so it's just who's coming out on top between the two of you for when you're doing <laughs> that and what is it about Jordan that makes him so difficult to beat from the penalty spot? Yeah, no, Jordan's obviously great. Um, I think I've had one penalty against him in my career and I managed to, to score that one when he was back at Sunderland, so I still give him a bit of stick for that every now and then. But, um, no, look, penalties are, are something I, obviously I practice throughout the season a lot. Uh, I wouldn't say I've done a load more than what I normally do since I've been away of England so obviously we have three keepers here with the squad so they're always chopping and changing uh, when when the lads are practicing so um, yeah like I said Jordan's Jordan's brilliant it's great to have his um, he, all the training he does and obviously the confidence he, he's took from the last couple penny shootouts we've had with England um, whenever that's called upon hopefully um, yeah he, he'll stand up like he has done for, for England in the past Thank you, Theo. Next, we'll go to Rob Harris of AP. Hi, Gareth. Good luck for tomorrow. Um, just wondering what you made of Mark Bullingham's praise and whether you it's a conversation you want after the tournament about signing that new contract beyond 2022 or if it's something you'd prefer to wait even after Qatar. 
Uh, I, I think that uh, I said yesterday, um, any manager is going to be grateful for total backing of the board and um, uh, and our chief executive. So, from my perspective, that's obviously um, uh, I, I know that that's a private conversation that I've had that support. Um, but as I said yesterday, you know, in the end, internal backing is support important, but in this role in particular, external backing is just as important. And uh, I always think uh, to discuss contracts around tournaments in the past hasn't been the right thing. Um, and we were certain we weren't going to do that before this tournament. We should see how this goes. So all my focus is on the game um, and getting this team as far as we possibly can. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Uh, OK, next we'll go to Scott Wilson, the Northern Echo. Hi, Gareth. Um, Gareth, you obviously got the opportunity to play um, in 1996, you know, in, in massive tournament games in front of a home crowd at Wembley. You, you created, you know, some great moments, some great memories out in Russia. But just how big an opportunity is it for this group of players to, you know, potentially create those memories at Wembley in front of 40,000, hopefully 60,000 if the tournament goes on. You know, it, clearly this is, they're not going to get a chance to play another tournament at Wembley. So just what, how would you kind of put into words what, what chance that is for them? Well, I think every time you pull an England shirt on, you have the opportunity to score a goal that will be shown forever. Um, and to, to create a bit of skill or to be involved in a match that lives in the memory. And that's the beauty of playing for your country. You know, I think if you think of all the big players in history, of course, club European football, there are, there are significant memories. But when you picture those great players, it's normally in an international shirt that, that the most that their biggest memories are formed and um, that that is the case every time you pull on an England shirt so it, it is a, an opportunity that few get and these lads have, uh, have earned it and um, I'm sure they're going to relish that Thank you Scott Next we'll go to Nazar Kinsella from Goal.com Hi Gareth, um, I wanted to ask you um, you've been one to praise boys going overseas in the past um, how important do you think that link is still between Germany and English football uh, and do you see it continuing? Um, and, and with that in mind, I just wanted a word on Musiala as well, who who maybe will have a you know mark on the match after being in you know the England picture for a while. Yeah, well, we we have um, you know one of the things we did um, after the World Cup in Brazil, you know, we did a big study on Germany and um, uh, their development program, their youth program. They've, they've got an incredible football history really you know even when they've had teams that from the outside people have said if are going to struggle uh, in uh, 2002 you know we won heavily in Munich and Germany got to the final and we, we were uh, a long way ho on our way home so they've got that mentality which is one of the big things we've got to be ready for tomorrow um, obviously in recent past club wise um, a lot of their clubs have taken young players either on loan or ha have signed them, as in the case of uh, Jaden and Jude. Um, so that market seems to be open for people. Um, not all of that has been successful, you'd have to say, um, but um, but you know some of those uh, moves have been, and I, and I think it's good for players to to play abroad. You know, it broadens their football education. They get different styles of play, different styles of coaching. Of course, in our country now, our players are um, fortunate to work with some of the top managers in the world in their clubs as well. So we're getting that exchange of ideas and football education that didn't happen in the past. Um, with Jamal, he's a, a very good young player. You know, um, him, him and Jude were uh, in, in matches that I've watched them play for our junior teams uh, in the past. So he was. We were hopeful he would stay with us, but we totally understood his his decision, and um, it's nice for him that he's been able to get some minutes in this championship as well. Thanks, Eric. Okay, thanks, Nazar. Um, we don't appear to have any further more raised hands, so we'll conclude this media conference here. Thank you very much. Thank you.